Hello and welcome. In the context of my Eurocylinder exploration series, I would like to show you a Winkhaus lock in this video. Winkhaus is a German lock company that was founded by August Winkhaus in 1854 and they are making locks since 1879. Um, today Winkhaus is still family owned, so it's not part of a bigger group, but they are operating internationally uh, in, on 20 different sites and they have about 2000 employees. So now to this specific lock. Um, it's new or it's unused and I've already uh, picked and gutted one side. So uh, when we look at the keyway and compare it to a Yale keyway, here I have enables for comparison, we can see that it's like a uh, like a mirrored version of the Yale. So that's the Yale having the curve here to the left and here is the curve to the right and everything is, is mirrored as you can see. And you can make something funny because uh, here I have a, a Yale blank. It perfectly fits in the Ables and of course it doesn't fit to the to the wing house. But if you take the plug, so that's the plug from the already uh, gutted side uh, of the wing house and if you turn it you can see it's uh, it's almost uh, identical to a Yale, so it's really a a reverse or mirrored version of the Yale, and you can insert the the blank from the back, and it fits nicely. So this uh, has some implications for picking. If you wanna pick from the from the pin side, you can uh, see that if you wanna turn it. Um, uh, clockwise on the wing house it, it likes to uh, move out and it's the opposite on the on the on the Abus on the Yale here if you wanna uh, turn it the other way around if you wanna turn it counterclockwise it also uh, slips out so this can make some uh, problems depending on the direction you wanna pick but back to the wing house I will use uh, tension from the open side and that's actually really no problem because there is enough room uh, below this ledge uh, to get it open. Alright, so let me clamp it in a vise and we will pick it. So here is the wing house clamped in a vise. That's the bidding on the key. Not really crazy but nice uh, Shallow cut here at number two and deep cut at one and three, four, and five. So works nice and smooth and is locked up. I apply tension at the open side of the keyway and use a sparrow's shallow hook to pick it. So I go in uh, below this ledge light tension all the way to the back and just test the pins. There is a pin that wants to stay at the shear line. Got a click here. No reaction on the on the plug yet. Okay. Got a slight turn on the core, so maybe this is a spool. Okay, got it. Even better uh, turn on the core. And now I'm on last pin that gives feedback. Let's see. And it's open. So that wasn't too difficult. Let's try it again. Maybe some brushing over the pins. A little bit of pitch picking. I rarely do uh, pitch picking, but maybe this time it's successful and gotta turn on the core and it's open. All right, let's do it another time. And 
again it's open. So as you can see it's not really difficult to get into this lock. I do believe that Winkhouse is making are making great locks, um, but uh, probably this is uh, not a good example. Not sure uh, why it uh, opened so uh, so quickly and easily. I would say the tolerances are pretty bad. Um, yeah, but um, I don't know. So in order to cut it, um, you have to get off this this ring here. It's like on the on the Wilka. Uh, never-ending uh, ring, so that's not, not a clip. If you have a, a tool, you can uh, get it uh, off uh, without destroying it. But yeah, I will just uh, cut it open, and then I'll be back with the cutting. All right, so the clip is off, and now when I cut it, but there's a lot of uh, mechanics here in the tube. I hope I can get it out. So now the lock doesn't work anymore. I think it has to do with this uh, stuff here in the back. So now it, it works again. Let's see if I can get it off. Key pins are all standard. Uh, they are orange, so might might be a different alloy than the brass pins that are here in the uh, as drivers. We have uh, driver pins uh, one and two are standard, three and four are spools, and five is uh, one with uh, tapered ends. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. flat here, almost flat, nice and shiny. How does the plug look like? Also well made, round, smooth, nothing special. Bible also nothing special. So that's uh, the wink house quickly opened and uh, uh, cutting was not so easy. So thanks for watching. Happy picking. Bye bye. Sorry, I forgot to show you the reassemble plug. So you can see that the effectiveness of the uh, spool in 3 and the spool in 4 are not very good. They could be much deeper in the chamber of the plug to give a better false set or a more reliable false set. And also at position 5 the tapered pin only interacts with a, a smaller diameter uh, with a with a shear line. So this could also be much uh, much better if it was a, a, yeah, a deeper hole here. So it's sad um, that this uh, bidding causes all of the security pins to be actually almost not effective and yeah there are many different biddings of course um, and if the if a lock is advertised with security pins well it depends uh, mainly on the bidding if you have really advantage from these security pins all right but I will show you something else because this mechanics that I mentioned is actually um, there's a, there are actually a lot of parts. You can see that we have springs and uh, cylinders, and there is this little piece in the middle with uh, two springs. And I will partly reassemble the lock and 
try to demonstrate how this all together works. Alright, so here are all the parts in this lock. From left to right we have the plug, we have an element that interacts with the key, uh, it depresses the spring and uh, then this nose here interacts with the uh, center element and this is a very interesting piece uh, it has two springs the bigger one is for the uh, two big wheels here on, on the on the left and the right hand side and the smaller spring is for how can I show you is for this element so it's really uh, complex and this long nose here if it is pushed by the key then interacts um, with that element and depending on on the state it act it either uh, turns the the wheel the the outer wheel um, or if it is if it is like if it is like so uh, it doesn't turn the wheel so in, in this wheel uh, interacts with the cam so the cam has a special shape inside and it fits to the outer wheel at one uh, very specific uh, position so and depending on which side interacts uh, with a cam um, it is turned from the one side or it is turned from the other side so let me reassemble everything and I can then show you how it works So here it's reassembled. I temporarily inserted two steel spring clips just to hold the plugs in place and I've not added the, the pins. So when we closely look to the center element uh, we can see uh, that, that this and that are the long objects that interface with the, with the plug on the left and on the right hand side and we can see the two wheels that currently uh, can spin independent from, from the plug movement and we also see the big spring which is responsible for uh, keep those two wheels um, apart from each other so they do not uh, go together automatically now uh, as I said uh, they can turn independent of the plug and of course uh, the wheel then would interface with the with the cam so the cam now could turn without movement of the plug but now when I insert the, the key you can see um, there is this uh, nose moving from right to left and um, interfacing with this rectangular shaped object and this goes in a, in a gap here of that of that wheel so you can see that that gap here you can get it out so here you can see the gap and if it interfaces with this gap uh, now the the plug movement the plug the turn on the plug uh, causes a turn of the of the wheel and this takes along the cam so now you can turn the cam with a key and this also works of course uh, from the other side if you turn it turn it turn it it goes into the gap and uh, it can turn the can turn the cam and if there is no key on the other side, um, it would not, so it, 
of course uh, both both wheels would turn at the same time but this wheel is not uh, connected uh, to the plug as there is no no key inside and it there is nothing that goes in this in this gap here but this uh, this mechanism is very smart so you can have both keys in the lock at the same time and of course if there is a um, a cam you need to turn it uh, at the same time but if there is one key in the inside and you uh, close the door it's still possible to open the door with with the other key um, you would then see the other um, the inside uh, key uh, turning along with the uh, with the turn um, of the uh, outside key so this is a very special mechanism so that if you close the door and the key is uh, still in the lock you can uh, yeah still open the open the lock and uh, yeah turn the lock and open the door uh, and this means something for picking so let's assume you have picked the lock and you want to open the door so let's assume that this side is picked and of course you need to uh, turn the cam in order to unlock the mechanism of the the door so you need to apply force against the uh, the cam and I hold it now I hold now the uh, the wheel so this simulates the force you need to apply and if I now turn the plug uh, as the lock is picked nothing would happen so if you pick it and turn it uh, you would have no effect but you need to insert something into the keyway I can simulate it with my uh, Knife. So once you have picked it, you also need to insert something all the way along in the in the keyway, and then you can uh, you can turn it, and it uh, would then interface with the cam and hopefully open the door. Yeah, not just uh, picking the lock is required to open the door, but also inserting a tool so that the cam yeah gets turned with the uh, with the turn of the plug. All right, enough of uh, the wink house. I hope you uh, found it interesting and enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a little bit. Thanks for watching and happy picking. Bye bye.